if you thought the last tactic I looked at was weird, this one is going to really shock you. Hello everyone and welcome back to FM Base. In today's video, we're taking a look at another wacky and wild looking tactic. This is another strikeless one. We love strikeless tactics over on this channel and they just work so well and they love sitting high up on the FM base leaderboard. The one that we are looking at today is Wardy's The Flood. We've had a look at a number of Andy Ward tactics. They're all over the FM base tactics section of the website and this one it's quite a bit different to the other ones, as you can see up here in the top corner. It's a 4-1-3-2 situation, uh, but kind of like a 4-4-2 with a DM and two um, deeper attackers. And no strikers. You can see here, it's probably a bit more suited to sub top teams with a 60% win percentage. Underdogs only with a 32.5% win percentage. But what we will do is we'll of course test this tactic with both more dominant teams and more underdog teams as well. In the credits notes, he says a fun to watch and hugely successful strikerless tactic fed by through balls from flanks midfielders progressively overload the defense by flooding the channels. Hence the name, The Flood. We're going to get right on into this tactic but before we do if you have not yet subscribed feel free to hit that button down below we are so close to 3,000 subscribers over here on FM base so if you haven't hit that button yet feel free to do it now and also leave a like it does really help out these videos but yes here is the tactic in game it is a very very weird one uh, we've got shadow strikers we've got segundo volante is that what they pronounce? How do you pronounce that? Segundo Volantes. I uh, got inverted wing backs. We got wide midfielders. We got the whole shebang for this one. It is a weird tactic. It is a wild tactic. It's something that might be hard to just slot into a team. It's probably not a plug and play tactic. It's probably something that you would have to work your way up to with your team. But it is quite fun to test wild tactics like that. And that's what we're doing here today. So as per usual, I'm going to go through the team, show you all the roles and individual instructions and all of the uh, tactical style and the team instructions and whatnot so that you can recreate this tactic yourself if you're unable to download it. But if you are able to download it, the link as always will be down below. It will be right next to the link to my Twitch channel So if you haven't followed me over on Twitch feel free to do that now So here's our tactic I'm just gonna go through all the individual roles and if there's any additional instructions You'll see them pop up over here. So we have our shadow striker on attack our attacking midfielder on attack Our wide midfielder on the left which is on support wide midfielder on the right on support as well center midfielder on attack uh, Segundo Volante on attack in the defensive midfielder position. Uh, we then got Inverter Wingback on the left on support. Uh, Inverter Wingback on the right on support. Our left central defender on defend. Our right central defender on defend. And finally, our sweeper keeper who is on support. Then if we run through the team instructions, it is on a custom tactical style. Mentality is positive. In possession, uh, fairly wide attacking width. Underlap left, underlap right selected with play out of defense. Standard passing directness, slightly higher tempo, uh, low crosses with work ball to the box, and run at defense is also selected. In transition, we're counter pressing, countering, slowing pace down, distributing to the flanks, and throw it long is also selected. And out of possession, we've got offside trap selected, much higher line of engagement, standard defensive line, standard defensive width, uh, extremely urgent pressing and prevent short goalkeeper distribution is also selected. So there it is. There's the tactic. That's all you need to know if you are to recreate this tactic from Andy Ward. Now what I'm going to do is jump into some gameplay and see how this tactic works. So we're going to start off with Manchester United in this game against Tottenham, which they won 3-0. You can see the players that they did play in the specific roles. Juan Mata playing as a wide player on the left. We've got Pogba playing that defensive midfield Segundo Volante role. Uh, Fred in the middle. Fernandez playing as a shadow striker with Donny van der Beek as the attacking midfielder next to him. Alex Tellers playing on the right, which is interesting. Let's see how they got on in these games. Bruno Fernandez scoring a hat-trick in this one. So the first goal comes here. We've got Alex Tellers out on the right-hand side. Paul Pogba pushed quite forward from that defensive role. Um, he totally just did a... What are they called? What's it called? The thing where you flip your foot around the other foot? Oh my god, I completely forget what it's called. So here we go, we'll see it again. It's called a Rabona! Oh my god, I remembered. It comes into Pogba. He does a Rabona cross to Bruno Fernandes, the Shadow Striker who slots it home. 
to get Manchester United the win. Well, not the win, the first goal in this game. Luke Shaw on the ball now, playing with Alex Tellers again. This pippity popping between each other. Luke Shaw comes into the area, and Bruno Fernandes is arriving late from Shadow Striker. Gets in behind the defense, and should I say, flooding the attack. We'll then check out a game with Real Madrid. They beat Bayern 5-0 in a Champions League knockout game. Um, Hazard playing as the shadow striker. Isco as the attacking midfield role. Casemiro playing that Segundo Volante role. Interesting to see. Let's see how they get on with this tactic in this 5-0 walloping of Bayern. So Vinicius Jr. on the ball here, just driving forward straight through to the defense. Boateng makes a mistake for the first goal and Hazard is there, joining on the spot to score their first of this game. The next one comes, Corentino Tolisso loses out to Casemiro. Vinicius Jr. plays it quickly to Hazard and he just uses his pace and his skill to get past the defenders, Pavard, who he got past there. He just drove past him and slotted it home. Another one now, Hazard on the right-hand side, crossing it in, Neuer knocks it over towards Vinicius Jr. who crosses it in. Casemiro's there and a fantastic finish from the player playing in a Segundo Volante role. He definitely came forward then and is really helping out the attack. Really getting a lot of people in the box. A very attacking formation I'm seeing here as we see once again Vinicius Jr. playing in behind. That's literally what uh, the creator said. You'll see a lot of goals of balls being played forward in behind the defense and strikers getting onto the end of it, which is what we're seeing. We're seeing it once again here. Sergio in, he'll shoot from there and score as well. Fantastic finish from him. So yeah, some very impressive highlights of this tactic. Let's go check out the results of my test. What I did do as per usual is I used a few different teams in a couple of different divisions and I holidayed a full season just plug and playing this tactic. Uh, the assistant manager will take control of all games. So that means no transfers, um, no team talks, no sideline talks, anything like that. Just basically using the tactic in its purest form. So yeah, as always, I used two teams in the Premier League for this. I used Manchester United and West Bromwich Albion. So let's see how both of those teams got on. First off, Manchester United, you can see here, finished third in the Premier League. Quite a bit off the two top teams. Arsenal, I've seen, I've done a lot of simulations recently, and Arsenal always finish close to the top of the league table for some reason. But anyway, Manchester United in third, West Bromwich Albion down in 17th. In terms of across the league stats, Bruno Fernandes with one goal off top spot for Golden Boot. He was also third in the average rating. Probably played Shadow Striker a bit. And actually, impressively, David De Gea with the most clean sheets throughout the season. So it did really work quite well in terms of defensively for Manchester United. On the contrary, West Brom finishing in 17th. They did survive by the skin of their teeth. Is that the right... Is that the right... Is that what you say? That sounds weird. Anyway, two points above the drop zone for West Brom, above Newcastle. Um, we'll, we'll have a quick look at them in a little bit. But first off, of course, Manchester United in terms of other competitions. Knocked out of the FA Cup, knocked out of the Champions League in the quarterfinal, and knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Arsenal. In terms of their player stats and their team throughout the season, uh, highest average rating was Bruno Fernandes. Not too many surprises there. And he did also get the most goals and the most assists for them out throughout the season. He had... Well, that's nearly 50 goal contributions. That's 47 goal contributions throughout the season in 54 games for Bruno Fernandes. A phenomenal season from him. Paul Pogba with 12 goals, 11 assists as well. So a pretty decent season from him as well. And Rashford only 11 goals, 13 assists as well, which is not very good from the Englishman. But hey, he didn't really get a chance to play that much as a striker. Bruno Fernandes is probably a pretty decent uh, shadow striker in that role. He has... Uh, pretty good stats for it. You can see here, everything that's highlighted is basically above a 13. The worst two are decisions and acceleration, which acceleration is probably relatively important because they do need to get up the field pretty quickly. Uh, but decisions are probably not as important. 13 is still a pretty decent stat. So yeah, Bruno Fernandes is probably a fantastic shadow striker. And it's no wonder to see that he did thrive in this tactic. Now we'll have a quick look at West Bromwich Albion. A season that they did really struggle in. They did only finish 17th as we saw uh, on the tactic page. It is well suited to more dominant teams. So not too surprising that West Brom struggled with this one. They were predicted to finish 19th. So they did actually stay up which is pretty impressive for them. Uh, for the competitions, they were knocked out in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup by Arsenal, second round by Burnley in the Carabao Cup. And if we look at their squad, their highest average rating throughout the season was players not at their team, so that's exciting. But from players at their team was actually Connor Townsend. He did only make two sub appearances, so that's 
Uh, not really counts. Let's talk about Sam Johnston instead with a 6.99. He played basically every game for them this season. So he had the highest average rating. In terms of goals, Carl Edwards uh, probably played attacking, um, probably played shadow striker for them most of the season. And he is a pretty okay low-level shadow striker, I would say. Basically just a sh Bruno Fernandes. But yeah, 14 goals, 6 assists for him. Mateus Pereira getting 10 goals, 9 assists. Pretty low numbers from West Brom. They didn't really thrive with this tactic, but it's not too much of a surprise because they're not a super dominant team. We'll now check out the Spanish teams. We looked at Real Madrid and Cadiz for this one. Real Madrid did, in fact, win uh, the Spanish first division on 90 points. Nine points clear of Atletico Madrid and... Uh, Barcelona were quite a while behind there with only 73 points. Uh, Rafael Varane got the highest average rating throughout the season and Tony Kroos with 15 assists is equal first with Jose Gaia and um, Thibaut Courtois with 20 clean sheets, which is pretty decent. Cadiz had a lot of players with a lot of yellow cards, which is quite funny to see. In terms of other competitions, Real Madrid obviously won the league. They came second in the Super Cup, knocked out of the semi-final of the Champions League by Barcelona, and knocked down the semi-final of the Spanish Cup by Barcelona. Barcelona went on to win both of those competitions as well, so that's pretty embarrassing for Real Madrid. But if we looked at their team and how they performed, you see they did really, really well in our little snippet that I showed of them playing with this tactic, but Rafael Varane, their highest average rating throughout the season. He was the league's highest average rating, so not too much of a surprise there. Um, Hazard in second. In terms of goals, Eden Hazard with 22, eight assists as well for him. Second was Cesar Gelabert. Maybe he played Shadow Striker a lot this season, which is quite interesting to see. Yeah, he may have played in that Shadow Striker role more than you would expect. Back to the season. I'm not surprised. I'm not sure why someone like Vinicius Jr. didn't play there. I guess he isn't really well suited, so maybe they couldn't. But yeah, 22 goals for Eden Hazard. Uh, Senzio with nine. Isco with eight. So not a fantastic output from Real Madrid. One thing that I didn't mention before, maybe teams aren't very well suited to this. It's not a very good plug-and-play tactic in terms of you need your players to be able, like you need to sign the right players for each different role and position. So that's probably a thing we're seeing here with Real Madrid. Now, if we look at Cadiz, they were down in eighth. They did have a really, really good season um, in comparison to what they were expected. I'm pretty sure they were expected to finish, yeah, down in 18th. They were expected to get relegated. They did, in fact, finish in eighth. Two points off European football as well for them this season. Their best player for them was their goalkeeper, David Gill. He only played five appearances, though. So we're going to look at Jeremias Ledisma. <laughs> he played 37 games for them and was probably their best player. In terms of goals, Alex Fernandez scoring 20 for them this season. He had a very good season. Um, why is this wrong? Yeah, he probably would have played a shadow striker for them this season is what I'm reading into here. And then next on the list was Alberto Perea, who maybe played a shadow striker a bit when that guy was injured. He's actually not too bad technically as well. But yeah, really, really successful season for Cadiz. I'm guessing they got knocked out of everything else. Yeah, they got knocked out of the Spanish Cup in the fourth round by Girona. Um, so a pretty, really, so pretty, so pretty, really. So a very good season in terms of the league for Cadiz. It really worked for a team like this, surprisingly. I'll be honest, it's probably a bit of an outlier, but We'll take it anyway, won't you? The final team we looked at was Sunderland in League One. I've been liking to look at some lower league teams recently for this. And this time I decided to choose Sunderland and they actually went on to win the league. They are, I'm pretty sure, predicted to finish first or second most times. They predicted to finish third in this one. So they did overachieve slightly uh, with 94 points, only six losses throughout the season. Uh, Jordan Willis with the highest average rating throughout the whole league and Lee Burge, their keeper, with the second most clean sheets as well. Their best player, obviously, Jordan Willis throughout the season. And in terms of goals, Max Powell was scoring 19 for them. He's more of a defensive midfielder, isn't he? He might have played Shadow Striker. It says that that's his first role when he, you do click on him in the attacking midfield. His best role is Shadow Striker. So maybe he played there a lot this season, which is interesting to see. Probably not the player I would have chose. But Lyndon Gooch with 12 goals in second. Uh, Ross Stewart with 11 as well. It would be interesting to see how this tactic would go over a long term period with a club. Of course, there's only enough time to really do one season of simulations with these tactics. But it did work relatively well with Manchester United finishing third. Maybe you would expect them to finish a bit higher. West Brom had a pretty bad season, but Madrid and Cadiz well overachieving and Sunderland getting promoted as well. So it worked quite well for four out of five of the teams. 
and the other team didn't even get relegated, so not too terrible at all. So yeah, that's going to be it for this tactic video. If you did like it, as always, feel free to leave a like and remember to subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching this one. I appreciate all the support on the channel as of late, and I'll see you a lot in the next FM based video very, very shortly. Toodaloo. <laughs> Toodaloo. Oh dear.